in the last chapter we covered cursor object in detail in this video we will focus more on input binding that we could not cover in our last episode in real life we pass input parameters and they help us to build dynamic queries to improve the reusability of our stored procedures let's take an imaginary scenario and understand the use of input binding in the cursor object let's assume i am a snowflake administrator and would like to see total failure or success login count for a particular type of client and authentication pattern before we go and write a stored procedure with cursor and input binding let me run a query on our usage history so this is my snowflake shared database this is my account usage schema and this is my login history and to access this view you need to use account admin role now let's run this query and see how the result looks like so when you run a select star on this table this is how the outcome looks like and if you see what is the reported client type sometime you connect to the snowflake using snowflake web ui or a javascript driver or snowflake snow sql cli this is the authentication factor sometime it is password sometime it is oauth and other mechanism now if i would like to see the success and a failure for all the client which are using snowflake web ui and the authentication type is password let's see what result does it bring so since i am using snowflake trial edition i have only one user called user admin and if you look into this is success column and error message there are two failure here incorrect username password and here also incorrect username password now what i want so i should have a json output like this where it says this is my success count this is my failed count and these are the failed user let's say if this is my requirement how can i achieve this so before we go to the json we'll start with a simple outcome and we'll see different scenarios so this is my first stored proc called my proc v1 where i'm passing client driver and auth factor which is nothing but is no flake underscore ui and here it is a password and now this is i am opening a cursor called login history cursor and this is my select statement and in the select statement i have this reported client type equals to client driver and i have used since the client driver is my variable i have used colon notation and here also auth factor colon notation now after that i am opening the cursor i am running it through if is success equals to no let's concatenate this message and finally call this stored procedure if it is created successfully now let me quickly execute and see whether this approach of replacing the variable with actual value works or not so my stored proc got created successfully now i am passing this two parameter and let's see so it says statement error on line 3 at position 4 sql compilation error client driver not set so this approach of putting the variable value to create a dynamic sql doesn't work with cursor now this is my second approach where i am creating a stored proc call stored proc call v underscore 2 and if you look here on the line number 52 i am creating a sql statement dynamically by passing the client driver and auth factor values here i can also use different approach and finally this sql statement is being fed while creating the cursor object let's see whether this approach works or not so this approach also doesn't work because when you create a cursor using a for keyword either you have to give the sql statement or you have to give a result set what we have seen in the past episode so approach 2 also did not help me to achieve the goal now let's talk about a third approach and i am creating a stored proc call v underscore v3 and here i am instead of dynamically creating a sql statement and assigning to a text variable i am creating a dynamic result set where i am passing this client driver and auth factor to create a dynamic sql and that dynamic sql is assigned to this result set and finally through this result set i am opening a cursor and trying to apply my logic let's quickly create this stored proc so this got created 
and I am calling this stored proc and let's see what result does it bring. So I managed to get this very simple output which is nothing but concatenation of username followed by the error message and this is giving me the result which I wanted. So if you are passing an input parameter and trying to create a dynamic SQL and then want to run the dynamic SQL through the cursor, this is one way. Now we are going to use a very different approach called binding and this is my v4 stored procedures and if you look into the line number 95 I am creating my cursor and here this is my select statement and if you look into this part where my reported client driver equals to I have a question mark and then I have a first authentication factor is also equals to question mark. So this syntax indicate to snowflake that I need to bind this question mark with actual value. And where you have to bind it? When you are opening a cursor. So when you open a cursor, you need to use a keyword called using. And here you can pass those input parameter one after another. So the client driver and auth factor. So the client driver will be attached to this position. Okay. And auth factor will be attached to this position. Okay. So this is primarily a positional match which we try to do and assign the values of a variable when executing the query. Now one interesting thing though they are all text input parameter I don't need to put a single quote around my question mark snowflake takes care of these things automatically. Now once my cursor is created I can really loop through and I can use the dot notation to check if the error message is yes or no. If the success is no then simply concatenate my error message and return the error message. Let's create this stored proc. So it got created. Now let's quickly execute this. So I got the same result where two entries which had unsuccessful login is registered here. So if you have gone through this simple example, but what if I have to generate a JSON? So this is my stored proc v5 taking the same input driver and auth factor. Here my return type is variant in place of text. And here I have declared a couple of variables. So failed count is zero, success count is zero. I am creating an array type of failed user, okay, which is taking this default function called array construct. So this particular variable is of variant type and will have an empty array construct. Here, this is my select statement with question mark, first question mark and second question mark. And when I am opening the cursor, here the binding is applied, where first question mark will be replaced by the driver, client driver, and second question mark will be replaced by auth factor. Now here I am executing a for loop as we have done earlier and every time it is unsuccessful the array is appended with username and error message and failed count is increased by one. If it is successful the success count is increased by one and when I return since here if you see this part of the syntax here I am using the object construct function and passing failed count success count and failed user and all those things will appear as a JSON object. Now let me execute this and show you the outcome. So my v5 got created. Now let me call this v5. So this is my result and that's what I was expecting. So whenever we are going to create a dynamic query via cursor or result set, make sure that you follow this input binding approach as a best practice rather than using a lot of concatenation approach because the binding is directly supported through the cursor or you can alternatively use result set. Now let's go back to our query history and see how does it look like. If I come to my query history, this is the call for my stored proc and if I hover the query execution, it is having a question mark and this question mark is replaced dynamically and you would not be able to see the value. So we have understood what is the importance of this question mark sign and how we can really do the binding using using keyword while opening the cursor hope you got something valuable from this video if you did please hit the like button your support not only recognizes the work behind this free content but also helps other to discover this playlist and if you think it can help someone else in your team feel free to share thanks for watching and let's spread the knowledge and growth together